Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to talk Bulldog Volleyball. I'm with us, head coach Tia Branda Wilhelm. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks for having us back. I know, kind of like football and soccer, uh, your team excited to be back at home after a, a, a couple long road trips uh, here over the past couple of weeks. Oh, for sure. Yeah, a couple road trips, uh, started a conference on the road. And although it's really fun to travel with this team, so it, you know, being on the road is, is nice uh, also. And I think it's really good for our team to have those experiences talked to you a couple weeks ago where uh, your team had got off to a great start winning the uh, Ferris State Invitational 4-0 and and then went out to Colorado and uh, faced some of the nation's top teams at the Colorado Premier Challenge. Yeah we went two and two there and it was a really good tournament really good level of play. Uh, I was really pleased with how we got better through the weekend uh, for sure. How did those matches uh, those first two weekends help prepare you for the start of conference play which uh, began this past weekend? Well um, I think maybe we could have been more prepared for the start of conference play for sure. Um, I thought the two weekends were good. We just have, um, although we have a lot of players back, we're still you know, figuring out it's really a whole new dynamic of a team and we're still having to figure out some of those, some of those dynamics. As we go to some of the highlights, uh, you started off conference play uh, across the Mackinac Bridge at Lake Superior State yeah. and always, always nice uh, for some of your, your student athletes to make that first trip maybe across the bridge. Yeah, for some of them it, it is their first time so it's always fun to cross the bridge and we took a few minutes to stop and have you know picnic lunch there and stuff and, and get ready. Maybe talk about this match and what were some keys here for your team and, and, and things you did well. So one of the things I thought was really good, uh, we. You know, the serve and pass game was, was pretty solid for us that um, that night and we had some different players step in and play and they did really well in, you know, as they were going into the game. I thought our level of play stayed really high. So it was really exciting to see some kids come off the bench and go out there and really be impactful. We've kind of been looking to, for that to happen and it was nice to see that. Balanced effort here. Uh, you get uh, the opening uh, set or two uh, here in this match and Rolled to a 3-0 to zero victory, but you had a balanced effort. Uh, Katie O'Connell with 10 kills. You've got Allison Kappel, Courtney Brewer, all, all right there in the, in the middle as well. Yeah, and um, limited, a little bit limited playing time for a couple of the outsides, but it was, you know, it was, like I said, it was really good to see some other people come into the game and be really effective in the things they did. We can talk about Lauren Helson, how she's kind of developed into that role as the libero for you. Yeah, she's, it's a whole new thing for her, and... Um, it's kind of neat to see her grow. She's definitely getting better, and um, you know, it's been she's taken some lumps along the way, as you would expect, because um, it's such a new role for her. She was a setter in her previous previous experiences, so this is just really different. But she's definitely growing in that, um, and really excited to see how well she's doing defensively. I know uh, when you look at the final statistics uh, from this one, uh, always nice to see when uh, when you hit a, a solid figure, 259, and, and the opponents are at a negative percentage for the match. Well. Um, yeah, 259 isn't quite where we'd want to be, but I thought we were working on a few things, so that was better. Um, and then the, you know, obviously, anytime we can hold the opponents below 100, we're pretty excited about that. Get the three to zero victory, and then you had to turn back around, uh, come back south of the bridge to take on Saginaw Valley State, and one of those teams that is always competitive year in and year out. Yeah, and Saginaw's got a ton of seniors this year that have been just so close. Um, close to the NCAA tournament, um, being, you know, they're one of the one of the top teams in the region every year. And, um, and, and, and in our conference too. So, and they had suffered a disappointing, surprising loss. I think the night before they lost in three to Northwood. So I think it was, you know, they played really well and you know, we did not play really well and it was definitely a matchup in their favor for sure. As we go to some of the highlights of Saturday's match and obviously uh, you, you mentioned it right there, Northwood uh, was able to beat them the night before. It really speaks to the, maybe the competitive level of the GLIA. Yeah, I think our conference is, you know, definitely getting stronger. We just have so many um, we didn't graduate a lot of the top players from last year, so so many of our all-conference players on all, you know, all the teams returned this year. So I think you just see a much more experienced conference, and you know, even teams that didn't win a lot of games last year, they have everybody back, and so they're just way more experienced, and and they're going to be out there fighting. Obviously, they got off to a great start, uh, winning the first two sets here, but. Maybe talk about uh, the way your, your team uh, battled back. Uh, you, you win the third set and then, and then a very competitive match in the fourth set. Yeah, I, you know, I thought there were some things that we did well battling-wise. Um, definitely, you know, we, we were pretty efficient out of the middle and our middles, I think, got better through the match. I'd just say overall, you know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great serve and pass day for us. And that's kind of the foundation that gets you, you know, into the game. And th for the fact that we missed a, a large number of serves and had a large number of poor passes off serve receive. I think the fact that we were still in the match speaks to everything else that we did. You know, our blocking, our defense, our attacking was all really strong. 
You mentioned it earlier, obviously, uh, some kids playing some different roles and, and some younger kids. Maybe talk about those younger kids and, and how they've grown uh, here and, and became a part of your program. You know, some of the most exciting younger kids are freshmen that you don't really get to see a lot of. We have one freshman who's out there playing quite a bit here in Lookville, but we have five other freshmen that are getting so much better every day in practice, and it's really exciting. You don't get to see them on the court as much, you know, because we do have some older kids in those positions that just have a little more experience. but. Um, I think our young kids are really improving and I'm really excited to, to see what they will be doing. Um, it's, it's really nice to see our, fresh, our uh, freshman, sophomore in the middle right now, so we're super young in that spot and I feel like they just get better every single day. So that's really exciting to see that. And they're in the gym doing extra time and you know, trying to you know, just work on their game and improve what they can do offensively for sure. You put this weekend behind you, I know, and uh, now you move yeah. forward. Uh, three big matches this week, uh, Tuesday night matchup against Northwood, and then two tough opponents coming in uh, this weekend, but, but nice to be back at home. It is nice to be back at home, and it's nice to just, you know, to suffer loss and, you know, be able to get right back into the flow and get into another game um, just with a practice or two getting ready for that game. For a student athlete, maybe what, what's the stretch like playing so many matches uh, over the course of a, a, a few number of days? You know, it's... Um, it's a lot because they're trying to obviously watch film, evaluate themselves, watch film, getting ready for the next opponent and, um, you know, being at practice and making sure they're still getting enough sleep and nutrition and, and staying ahead in all their classes so that if they, from being on the road last weekend, they have to catch up from all that. It's a lot, but it's also, it's what you sign up for. It's, it's probably the best time of the year when you have a bunch of matches and fewer practices. Maybe how nice is it to be uh, here at home this weekend, homecoming weekend, and I know your team uh, not yeah. always no, not always uh, at home during homecoming Yeah, I've been here 24 years, and I think this might be our second, maybe our third time that we've been home or close to home on homecoming. So, so that'll be kind of fun to see to see that, and to maybe have some of our alumni back at the match. It'll be really cool. This weekend, uh, you take on Purdue Northwest and Parkside, and now these two programs maybe have been in the GLIAC here for a couple of years. Maybe, maybe how they have, how, how have they adjusted and, and become part of the GLIAC? Yeah, both of those teams are so much better than they were last year. Even um, they're just they've adapted, and their their kids are stronger. And um, it's just those are two really good coaches, and you just you know you just see them improving all the time. So. Um, where last year maybe they didn't, you know, Parkside made the conference tournament last year for the first time, so that was pretty exciting. But um, I think both of those teams will be way better than last year and, you know, up there contending at the top part of the conference. So. What will be some keys for your team uh, here going into the weekend? You know, we'd like to serve and pass and, and do that well and then, you know, just trust ourselves and take care of the rest of the parts of the game. Coach, thanks for being thanks. with us, and uh, congratulations, 7-3 and three start, and uh, best of luck here uh, this week. Thank you. That'll do it for Ferris Sports Update. A reminder, you can follow all the action online, ferrisstatebulldogs.com. Have a great week.